Gary, so good to have you on the Sports Editor. Welcome to the show. Really good to chat about, it. I believe, an awesome sport in squash. Um, one of the fastest sports around, I think. But it's really good to chat to you and, and your career. So thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you. It's great to, great to be here. Great to be chatting, chatting to you and, and hopefully promoting, doing my bit to promote squash and try to get guys interested now that we squash is allowed to be um, we the clubs are open again. We actually have um, our national tournament coming up in October. So also one of the few sports where where the tournaments are, are kicking off. And if if you perhaps saw as well, the Manchester Open was on over the, the past few days as well. So internationally, it's also kicked off again. Uh, it's good. It's good. I'm glad that it's slowly coming together again because I think we we need sport generally speaking. And I'm glad squash is up and running again because it. It does make a difference, I believe. So, yeah. Big time, yeah. <laughs> so, Gary, you turned pro in, in 2006. Um, and, and from that moment, did you feel it was um, your hard work had paid off? But once you turned pro, it was sort of now the hard work needs to continue, but maybe in a slightly different context? Um, it, it wasn't quite sort of the sense that the hard work had paid off just yet. I mean, turning pro is one thing, but then competing at that level is is a whole nother level so so i mean well obviously the that was i was starting to reap the the benefits of the hard work but yeah once you go full time the the work uh, if anything it's it gets harder to mm. compete um uh, there's so many good one thing i learned early very early on from traveling to play all these tournaments thinking that oh, I'm a professional player now and I'm really good sort of thing. Um, you turn up in, in towns that host PSA events and there's a whole host of players just as good as you when you're starting off. And it's, it's quite, a, quite a rude awakening early mm -hmm. on that, yes, you've worked hard to get to where you are, but sheesh, there's, you've got a lot of hard work still, still ahead to, to progress. No, very, very true. And I'm sure, you know, like most sports, we've been talking about like the mental side of things. Um, and I believe winning is a mindset. Was that something that was installed in you at a young age? Or was it just as you played and you, that's something you picked up along the way? Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly how, where, where I picked it up, how it came along. But I'm, from a very young age, I was extremely competitive and it didn't matter... <laughs> Um, I played cricket, um, soccer, um, athletics. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you, I, I was, I did a lot of different sports, and no matter what sport it was, even swimming, it, it bothered me if I if I wasn't winning. And <laughs> mates and I used to play um, street cricket. I'm sure you remember yeah. the the adverts of the the kids and the the, the lights coming on and. <laughs> yeah. um, they wanting to, yeah. I mean, just playing in the street. I um, mean, our old complex. It it was do or die. So I mean, mm. yeah. It it, it really. I'm just, I think I'm just competitive by nature, and I think all all sports people that take it seriously, and even those some of them that are a bit more sociable, you can see by by their mannerisms and behavior on court as to. Who is extremely competitive and who's a bit more relaxed? But I'm definitely. Yeah, it was. I, I'm not quite sure where it came from. But geez, uh, the minute I started com playing sport, it, it was competitive. <laughs> no, excellent. That's so good because I mean, obviously, it helped um, with your high expectations of yourself. And did, did that, I'd say, drive you to play for South Africa? That was like an ambition and a goal. I'm, I have to play for South Africa. Yes, I mean that's. In all sports, playing for your country is is one of the the pinnacles of of that sport. So um, if again, if you are slightly competitive, geez, that's that's something you you as a kid would would dream of. And then if you get the opportunity or um, commit to it, um, that's your that becomes one of your your major career goals. Um, mm. So, yeah, that, that competitiveness, definitely that not wanting to lose because you do lose a lot on the way to, to the top. But it's, it's that losing that, that allows you to, 
to set your uh, work on your training, set your goals, and, and keep keep working. Um, if it came easy, you would stop. Really true. Yeah, yeah, true. We're talking about working hard and and, and telling your goals. In, in 2015, you were ranked number one in the, the men's category, and you went on to win the, the Jarvis Cup that year. Um, was that what you consider one of your finer moments in your, your senior career? Um, yeah, look, um, being ranked number one is is obviously no small small sort of <laughs> feat. It, it's definitely it's it's on the top of my CV. Um, then I mean there there are a few other um, highlights. Um, winning the SA Nationals in 2017 is also something that that any squash player that's competing would would is striving towards to be national champion. So, so, um, and uh, you, you can be national champion, but not number one in South Africa, um, ranking wise. So, yeah. so, so to be ranked one is, um, they have always going to be a goal, um, to win the national championships is another, um, big goal. They often go hand in hand with it, um, sort of thing. So I mean, yeah, being ranked number one is was a massive achievement for me. Winning nationals and then also being selected for the for the the national team in 2017 and 2019 was another another absolutely massive massive um, achievement that I was really pleased to to be chosen for that team. That's excellent, brilliant. I mean, you know, talk a lot of achievements, but it's obviously you've put in a lot of work for that, so. Just briefly, I mean, what is your training schedule like? Do you have to train in, in the morning and evening, seven days a week? How, how long do you yeah. actually train for? It's, it sounds like <laughs> a little bit. It's, you know. it, yeah, no, look, it's, it's basically, it's, uh, it's, it becomes a lifestyle, put it that way. So you'll, you'll get up. Um, some people are early, get up a bit better in the morning. It just hinges what time you, you sort of get to bed. I generally get to bed quite late. So, which makes me a bit of a later riser. To you. The, the sleep is extremely important when you are training hard. Um, but yeah, I, I do a morning session, which takes anything from 40 minutes to an hour, hour and a half in, in the morning. And then, and then basically just come home, relax, eat, um, prepare for the day. And then um, I'm based at Smallness and Squash Club. Um, so just, just on midday, I'd be heading through there I do a bit of coaching there and then start with with my next my, my actual second training session which would the, the morning sessions I generally um, do sort of gym work and stuff in the gym and then afternoon and evening it's it's court work and and all of that sort of stuff so um, I go through to the club and probably usually do another 45 to an hour session just around midday and then Later afternoon, evening, I'll I'll do another probably an hour session and finish off usually later on at night with like a half an hour to an hour sort of stretch stretch at home. So I mean, yeah, you're looking at if, if you total it up, you're looking at sort of three to four five hours of of training. Uh, I do six days a week. The body does need one day of recovery, mm. so I generally take the, the Sunday off just to relax and hopefully socialize with a few friends and <laughs> and and yeah just just yeah. enjoy uh well the the weather when it plays its part <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you you're a, you're a busy man despite your training so it's good and i just want to touch on one thing you mentioned earlier about the world championships that must have been a jolly good experience for you in, in 2019 you know how did you find it were there a few uh, players that were rather tough against or in a specific country perhaps. But how did you find the, the World Championships in 2019? Yeah. 2019, it, it was, uh, each one of them is, is unbelievable for a player to attend to. Just the, the hop around it. Um, the, 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 it, was, it was in Washington. Um, it was my actual first trip to Washington itself. I've been to the States once, once before, but um, and they put on the, the center itself was unbelievable. They put on such a good show. Um, it, it really was fantastic. The, the, the show the organizers put on. Um, and then in terms of the, the playing, um, I, I can't, I won't even say that there's, 
there was one match that was tougher than the other. I mean, even when you win, it's it's each country's best players. Um, yeah. Is like I said earlier, there's so many good players out there. Every single match, you turn up and you have to play. If you don't play 100% on the day, you, you're in trouble. Um, the, the level is just genuinely so high. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just such an awesome thing to experience being around so many top international players in in one venue. Um, you get to see all the well the the, the Egyptians that get selected to to go. They could send about three teams and probably finish first, second, third. But yeah, just getting to see all those guys and even possibly playing a few drawn in their pool, getting the chance to play against guys at that sort of level as well. It's the, the, the tournament is, is just unbelievable. Wow, well, great experience. I would love to see it one day. But talking about the Egyptians, those jolly good players, I mean, they do well. And I'm saying, like, they'll contend to probably being best in the world. What's their secret? Yeah. Because every time you see a result, because the Egyptians are right up there. I mean, yeah. they're dominant. They, they, yeah, so they get it right. It's sure. It's quite annoying because there's so many. And, and the ones that we, we see most of are, I mean, they're your top 20 in the world. Now, if you go top 100, there's... A hundred, there's, there's so many. So it's not just the guys in the top top 20 that we know from watching on, on the PSA Live and, and Facebook and YouTube. It's, there, there's so many more. And they do a few things very well. Um, they've got um, sort of two, two major sort of training centers set up, in one in Cairo, one in Alexandria, where basically they're all filtered towards they all play each other all the time. Um, they'll have a pool of probably 10, maybe even 20 players at each center that are ranked in the top top 100 in the world. So they are playing together and training with each other all the time, which which really makes for uh, – it just – yeah, um, the, the level has to keep going up. Our problem in South Africa, we've got – in Cape Town, I mean, there's two of us really, maybe three – um, located here that play and train together. Urban, maybe one PE, one Joburg is about three. So it's in terms mm. of, of that, it's, you're just never going to compete when there's 20 guys of that level playing and training together. The other thing that they also do quite well is um, they, in, from a young age, the guys are training properly. Um, oh, okay. They're doing... They're doing um, a lot of solo training, hitting, learning how to hit the ball and doing hours of that. Whereas over here, um, un unfortunately, when as a coach, you tell one of your juniors that you train to do solo training, it's, it's basically like a swear word. It's like, no, no, why do I need to do that? It is for letters as well. Um, um, they, they want to just play, for example. Um, there's nothing wrong with playing, um, but if you want to achieve great level, um, greatness in the game, unfortunately, you, you have to do a lot more training than actual playing. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that mm -hmm. is a, a, a change that needs to take place. Yeah, the Egyptians learned that, like I said, from a very young age, there's nine, ten-year-olds on court doing solo, hitting the ball sweeter than some of our, our provincial first league players already sort of thing oh. from, from training. Then what they do is, as those juniors progress, so they 13, 14, 15 years old, your, your top guys, when they are back in the, in the little region, that, um, in their, their training hub, they, the, the for Rami Ashur, the, the Ali Farag, they will hit with, they will train with that, 14, 15 year old, so yeah. that at a young age they're being exposed to a world class player sort of thing. Um, that's what they do very well. Um, they expose the juniors at a young age to good training, hard training, and also to to the top guys to to play play and train with them. Um, yes. Even if it's just one session a week, um, yeah. just that exposure that once a week is is massive for for a junior. 
yeah, it, it goes along with that saying, you know, it, the perfect practice makes perfect. So, yeah, it's yes. often the nitty gritty stuff that people don't want to do, but that's the, the cost to becoming top in the world, I guess. And exactly. I mean, you, exactly. you, you know all about that. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Because if I'm not mistaken, your, your parents were quite, um, I wouldn't say, I would say rather, is they were supportive in terms of your squash. They really encourage you to pursue yeah. that level of competitiveness. So you understand how much work goes into it. So yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, look, I mean, you need certain structures in place. And, and as a junior, one important structure to have in place is, is from the parenting side. Um, they, they make huge sacrifices themselves. Um, there's, there's not a lot of funding in terms of sponsorship, especially for juniors. I True. mean, even for the adults. Put it that way. So um, they they need to they make huge sacrifices financially, mm. time wise. I mean, there's tournaments where they if yeah. I mean, my, my mom basically would sit at the centre from Friday through to Sunday, sure. and then we would have and then drive home if we drove to Joburg to play junior tournaments. It would be off Friday morning for the drive, drive back late Sunday, and yeah, and. And they would sit there at the squash squash center the, the whole time, obviously supporting that. I mean, they want to watch you play. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's a it's a whole it's a full on commitment if you if you're going that route. Um. So so the parenting from that side of things, I, I was quite lucky. Both my parents were at, were squash players and provincial oh. squash players to start with. So yeah. I mean, they they were under no illusions as to the commitment to to achieving national um, or provincial, national and international sort of um, uh, titles and all of that, what, what the commitment there would be. And they, they were pleased, pleased that um, I was channeling my energy in something you could call it sort of productive or, yeah. or positive rather than misbehaving or getting up to <laughs> mischief and, and it's easy to do that sort of thing. Yeah. When you've got a bundle of energy, it's, it doesn't take much for that to yeah. get, get targeted in the wrong direction. No, uh, that's true. But I think you, you've used a brilliant word there, commitment. That is that is essential to make it at that level. So, no, good stuff. Yeah. Gary, you, you're a left-handed player. That, that You must have an advantage over right-handed players in quite a bit, isn't it? Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I actually hate playing left-handed players myself. <laughs> it's as you said, it's um, there, there's not a lot of left-handed players uh, mm. playing at that level. Um, so I'm I'm used to playing right-handed players. So it's the same situation when a for when a right-handed player plays a left-handed as it is for me a left-handed playing another left-handed. I fully understand how right-handed players feel. It's Obviously, as you get better and better, you, from a tactical side and, and all that, you, you do work your game plan. You are able to play according to a game plan. Um, otherwise, you, yeah, if you can't do that, then you're going to struggle to, to achieve anything in, in any sport. You need to be able to play according to a game plan. Mm. Um, so it's just an ad adaptation of that. But it is definitely um, quite a... Um, from speaking from experience, playing a left-hander, I have to adapt my my game plan, the way I play, to to be able to compete against the left-hander differently to right-hander, and yeah, purely because of the the fewer numbers um, of left-handers playing, it's it it does make it difficult. So I'm sure a right-handed person would say would be saying the same um, that it's definitely harder. Um, to, to compete against a, a left-hander, a slightly more unknown sort of situation. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, it makes all those, those angles a lot more interesting than your drop shots. Yeah, I mean, you, you go on about it for days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this will probably be a hard one to answer, but can you remember, if possible, your longest rally, who was that against and, and when did that happen? Because I mean, those rallies are, I think, fantastic to watch. Yeah, sheesh. I mean, we've had some monstrous rallies. I've had some rallies over over a hundred shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, 
Um, I remember one in particular, purely, um, I, I also lost the match. Um, this was now, she's going back years and years. The, the other player has since, um, I'm, I'm not even sure if he still plays, he had a few injuries. It was against a player called Garish Neaga. We were playing in Bloemfontein in February. So it's altitude, it's, it's about 40 degrees. <laughs> and the ball was absolutely flying around. So, I mean, that, that just makes things tough as it is. And uh, the tournament organizer counted, he, he actually, the, the match was relatively long. So he got interested in just, must be a bit of a statistician by nature. He counted the one rally was about, I think it was 120 something shots. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you, you feel, you, the legs feel the uh, rallies that length. But often, um, um, during the interprovincials, uh, the growth points interprovincials, it used to be called the Jarvis Cup that you mentioned earlier, that's been renamed to the growth points interprovincial. I mean, they often the guys are having rallies between 50 and, uh, and 100 shots. As soon as you get two players relatively close together in terms of standard, the, the length of the rally just, it, it can be quite ridiculous yeah. at times. Yeah. yeah. No, I would, I would encourage guys to, you know, obviously when you're playing again and even when there's a big competition, you know, coming, like we mentioned earlier, the Manchester um, events, guys need to watch it because it's, I think it's, it's such a good thing to see how those guys can be so, I'd say, focused for so long just to yeah. cut at one point. It's amazing. <laughs> it, no, it, I, I've got so much respect for it because it, that's absolute dedication and concentration. It's, I mean, it's excellent. Yeah. And uh, the, the new score, well, when I say new, it's been around for a while now, but the, the current scoring system really does force that concentration. Um, we, we play points rally scoring to 11. So if mm. you have a, a slip of concentration that lasts three, four points, that's when you're scoring playing to 11, Three points, four points, wow. suddenly it doesn't sound like much, but in terms of squash, that's now suddenly a massive gap. You, you really, you're on it from, from love all in the first game, mm -hmm. um, concentration-wise. You, you can't have that, that waiver and dips in concentration. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's refer back to South Africa briefly. Um, top squash rankings in South Africa, are you currently... Uh, happy where you ranked, ranked, and do you have your eye on perhaps going a bit higher, or what's your sort of game plan from here? <laughs> yeah, the, look, the, this year's a, basically you can take it as a bit of a write off because, yeah, just, yeah. yeah uh, uh, as I mentioned, we, we actually have our first national tournaments coming up now in October. There's been nothing since February, March. Um, Squash SA basically froze froze the rankings and have said, "Look, let's let's restart okay. um, once the tournaments can." Fortunately, there are a few events cropping up on the calendar um, over the next few months, but a lot of the tournaments that that were rescheduled or cancelled, it's it's only you're only going to get a genuine reflection during the course of 2021. So, I mean, I'm obviously always going to be striving to be as high up as possible. Mm -hmm. Minimum top five um, national rankings, always um, just a very rough goal. And then within the top five, preferably number one, but but we've got one or two guys who, who are playing on tour who are, who are sharp that make that extremely difficult. But yeah, um, just to once things get going again, just to maintain maintain a top five top five national ranking. Uh, that's good stuff, Gary. You must keep going, keep going. It's good. <laughs> looking, looking forward to that tournament in October. That's going to be good stuff. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I mean, if you're looking for anything to watch, um, the, the the way they've structured it is we have to play regionals in. They've divided South Africa up into eight regions. Okay. Um, to, quali to qualify for the national championships. It's a different format because of the whole lockdown COVID um, situation. So Cape Town is hosting that. It's the 7th to the 10th of October. I'm not 100% sure on the venue yet. Um, that's still to be confirmed. But that's the, the, your, your local players, all your top local players will be in action the 7th to the 10th of October. Awesome. So that's, that's something to look forward to in yeah. just on two weeks. Yeah. No, nah, perfect. 
and then sort of creating like awareness for squash. I think that's it's important for for most sports, but also specifically for squash. Um, do you get a chance to go around South Africa and and showcase the game at all? Is is that part of I don't know Squash SA's plan, or is it something you just do on your own initiative? Um, in terms of Squash SA's plan, they focus a lot more on the sort of coaching and holding clinics in particular for, for juniors. Okay. Um, so they will structure that sort of thing um, more so than sort of say fly me to, to um, Nell Sprates or something to, to play. Usually that sort of thing, the club itself would contact the player mm -hmm. and say, hey, we want to do like an exhibition out here in, um, in Paul, for example, um, we'd like you and Rodney Dovax, another local, local. Um, we one and two in Western Province. We'd like the two of you to come and play, and then they set it all up in terms of that. Um, what the players sometimes do is, like for example, in 2017 when I won the the nationals, um, and we also had the SA Open for the first time. Now nationals and open are two different events. The the open caters for any. Uh, international players as well, whereas the SA Nationals is the South African Championships. So you have to be a South, uh, obviously a South African to play that. And myself and Christo Portkita, he won the, the Open, I won the Nationals. So we structured like an exhibition series around the country, mostly Joburg, that's where he was based. Right. Where we played, I think, at about eight different clubs to promote ourselves as the national and open champions competing against each other. But that that's the us as players organized. Um, and a, a lot of it is is your own sort of your own drive if you want to yeah. do something like that. Or or the clubs. The the clubs if they want that sort of thing, they they do that. Yeah. And talking about clubs and you touched on it a bit earlier, you, you based here at Milton. Um, is the club doing well? Um, how can how can I support it? Or you know, I'm sure we can create a link on, on this channel to so people can find out more about it. But you know, is the club how's the club looking? Are things going okay? Then? Yeah. Um, before lockdown, we were doing really well. Um, our, but in terms of leagues, we we had a lot of. Um, I think we had about 10, 10 league teams. Um, from first down to 16. Um, so uh, we were quite quite strong in that sense. The ladies section was growing very nicely. We, we had three ladies teams. Um, the top ladies team had moved up to second league and they were, um, yeah, um, the, the club was moving forward nicely. We, uh, we had, I think, roughly 170 members. So quite a nice membership base. Um, and yeah, the, the guys are always very supportive in terms of welcoming new 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 members. Um, they're great with the juniors as well. They there's a lot of guys very keen to to play and help juniors to progress. Um, unfortunately, the league was cancelled. The the league is was quite a good good way for um, local squash fans, so to speak, to to actually come and watch. Like I said. Uh, in the, the men's, we had a first league, so you would have been able to come and watch all your, your top Western Province players competing. Um, hopefully, that will resume 2021. In, you, it usually starts around March. So there. And Milton's also, um, we, we have set up, um, it, I'm not sure if it's on at the moment. Um, again, just, yeah, everything's been been thrown upside down this year but we we actually had set up a camera system on our match court which streamed live on on the Excellent. club's youtube youtube sure. page yeah so, so we did all our league games over 2019 were were streamed live on youtube oh, um, yes yeah, so, so even if you couldn't make it down you could watch from home obviously we'd prefer you to come watch watch at the club um it's, it helps with the atmosphere, but yeah, um, the club's got the, its its website. Um, um, we, we've got a few activities planned once we're allowed to hold hold events again and, and open it up fully to 
um, to to the public again. But yeah, there's we we always trying to have activities on the go for for local local squash players. Nah, brilliant. That's very very good. That's great, Gary. You guys are busy. It's good, uh, Gary. As we we sort of draw to an end, um, who was perhaps the biggest? your biggest influencer in squash for your career? Um, there were, I wouldn't quite say there was one specifically. There, there, there were a couple that definitely stood out. Um, in terms of like having that sort of idol that you, that you with all sport, where you watch those top international guys playing, you, you want to be like, like that person. I mean, uh, in my um, sort of just as I was cracking, uh, making it onto the scene sort of thing. Peter Nickel was one player. He was unfortunately near, basically at the end of his career when I was sort of just just starting out on, on tour and all that. But he was someone that, that sort of um, I, I really admired and looked up to um, internationally. Um, then more locally, at the time, I also got to train quite a lot with him when he was in South Africa. When I was in Durban, was Adrian Hansen. Then I mentioned earlier Rodney Durbeck, who's here in Cape Town. He was another one who was overseas for a long time. Who, as a South African squash player, you you know these names. You see them as a junior. You see them playing the national championships, and you watch them and think, oh, I want to be like him. Um, like as I said, um, I was lucky enough that. Um, I got to, as I improved and ended up in the same provincial team as them, um, we now sort of training partners and playing partners and all that as well now sort of thing. So, so definitely on the local front, like the yeah, likes of Adrian and Rodney were, were guys that I, I looked up to and wanted to try and be like, um, yeah, and different for different reasons as well. They they each had different characteristics and strengths and all that. And and that that's the other like as I said, there were different people um, that I did look up to um, for specific reasons, which I tried to piece together to to try and be better. Well, yeah. Excellent, Gary. Well, I think it's paid dividends because I think you've you've had a fantastic career and there's still a lot more left. I think you have to, you're have. going to show them what you made of, which is excellent. <laughs> That's good stuff, Gary. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can feel you that you're excited. You've got lack of energy. You want to get going with the squash and oh, that sprint. We need, we need more people like that. So yeah, uh, keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. It's, it's a great game. So, yeah. so, um, and after being starved of it for five months, six months yeah. now, it's, yeah. I think, I think everyone's just like itching to go. And <laughs> so it also helps, provide like that so if you if you had lost a bit of hunger i think a lot of people have refound that that yeah. sort of desire that passion for when something's taken away from you for for so sort of that length of time it, it does reignite the fire as well so I, i'm itching to go <laughs> yeah, good 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 gary well wishing you well my man um yeah thank you well for the upcoming events and i'm sure you're gonna Surprise yourself. Well, it's up. You do, you do very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, also, thank you very much. Because yeah. yeah. you've also got a web, your own website, hey? Um, well, yeah, I've got, um, I've got my, the pro shop that I've got at the Squash okay. Club. I've got it online. Yeah, I've just got, it, it does deal a little bit with coaching. It's got a page on there in terms of coaching and contact me and all of that stuff. But, but the actual, the website itself is geared as, as a, squash shopping online online pro shop sort of thing yeah okay yeah, but that, yeah i mean most of my stuff uh, well there's a lot more stuff in terms of me on on facebook and and yeah. also the squash club has a facebook um sites as well so in terms of competing um action shots or video clips and all of that more more so on the facebook than the actual Okay. The actual my Facebook, yeah, yeah. There's a couple from like from world teams. There is one in particular that I loved was I was playing the Korean guy, and he was on full stretch into the into the front, and they got it from the front. And I thought it was an awesome, awesome picture, sort of thing. And I, well, yeah. I suppose what helped was I actually beat him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, but but yeah, there's there's a quite a few good shots from like world teams and a few tournaments and some video clips and all that. So yeah, just all over my Facebook. All right. your, I'll, I'll your check it out. Yeah, no, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so if you guys are playing from the 7th to the 10th, it's, it's going to be here in Cape Town, eh? but you're not too sure of the exact venue. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I'm not, like I say, I'm not 100% sure. I think, um, they, I hear they've put it out to tender. I've heard Fisher talking about hosting it. Um, traditionally, they've held a lot of tournaments in the, the Claremont area at Western Province Cricket Club. Um, but yeah, Durbanville's also held quite a few tournaments over over the years. So I'm actually still waiting to okay. for confirmation. But okay. if, if the chances are, it will either be Fisher Western Province Cricket Club or Durbanville. Okay. One of those three venues. Yeah. Yeah, because then I definitely want to come watch one of the days. That'll be lacking. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll keep you posted. I'll, okay. be, I'll keep you posted with the, the venue and and also, I mean, if you want, I can send you when I get draws. Um, they usually email the draw through. I can also forward that on to you. Yeah, that'll be great. Like, come, come watch this match or yes. don't really worry about that. It's a bit of a mismatch, so it will be over quickly sort yeah. of thing, just in terms of the enjoyment or watching good Yeah, no, that'll uh, be cool. That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be lacking. Yeah, to yeah. Also, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's, there's obviously some rugby this weekend, some local rugby. Um, yeah. Let's just hope that... <laughs> It tri- like more and more sports because I mean, if you can play rugby, for goodness sake, you can play squash. I mean, those guys yeah. are on top of each other playing rugby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like, surely all these other sports should kick off now because I mean, really, yeah. They have to now. I mean, yeah, you you can't validate allowing rugby and then not allow uh, yes. yeah. another sport. Yeah. Like I said, I try to avoid politics, but I saw this bloody good um, Facebook post the other day. It was from a a chairman for one of the football clubs in England. And yeah, yeah. He doesn't understand. He gets into a plane with 300 people. He eats at a restaurant full of people. He can sit at the pub and have a drink full of people, but no one can watch a soccer match. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he's saying, how, how logic is this? It doesn't make it's any just, sense. So, <laughs> it's just not. And, and yeah. I, I don't know if you've watched any of the, the sort of games where they don't allow um, or, um, spectators in, but to me, it's it's like playing. I'd rather play a video game, to be honest. There's just yeah. no. It's amazing. Yeah. How how much of an effect the spectators have on a game, just in yeah. terms of the the vibe, the hum, the buzz, yeah. and all. That. It, it's just not the same if there aren't people. Yeah, absolutely, Gary. Yeah. I was talking yeah. to a rugby player the other day. I can't even remember his name. It was on the show, so on he said. Yes, the biggest thing, it wasn't the opponents that are playing against, it's the fact that you run out there and there's no one. It's like, and there's no one. (laughs) (laughs) How do you, you like, really get you playing on a Sunday morning with a group of your mates on the (laughs) the sports field? Yeah, might as well just do that. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, it's funny, Gary. I don't know. But anyway, (laughs) but thanks so much for being willing to chat on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Ah, it's awesome. Great. No, I'm great to, I'm glad you. Uh, chose a squash player. It's always nice. Yeah, it's lucky, man. The squash out there. Yeah. yeah, we need it. We need as much help as possible. Yeah. And I'll, I'll definitely pop into uni mode. I don't stay far away. It's a two-minute drive. Yeah. So then, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I'll keep you close a... with the activity. Yeah. 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 Look at what you're a legend. Thank you, man. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. And we'll chat again. Yeah. Perfect. Like, man. Okay. Yes, man. Cheers, cheers. Uh, cheers.